Secretary Elvira, thank you very much um, for being with us here this morning. Uh, and thank you for the leadership you've taken on this issue on climate change, but on so much else of what matters here uh, in Mexico. I want to also respect, share my appreciation for the Ministries of Foreign Affairs and Energy and for our partners in convening this event, uh, UNEP, the Global Compact, and the Global Initiatives. For all of us uh, concerned about the issue of climate change, I think one has to say that the past year has been a year of disappointment and confusion. Copenhagen delivered some progress, but it certainly was far less than we hoped for going into it. And in the months that followed, we saw what can only be described as a concerted campaign to sow doubt in the minds of the public and in the minds of other decision makers about the facts of climate science. But the facts have not changed. In fact, this problem is even more urgent than it was when governments gathered in Copenhagen nearly a year ago because every ton emitted since then, every power plant started since then, has made the problem more difficult to solve. I suggest we learned a couple of lessons from Copenhagen that are relevant here. One is not to rely too much on the Big Bang Theory of mobilizing a global response, the idea that we could get the whole thing done in one big meeting uh, last December but instead now to find ways to make real progress on reducing emissions, to find ways to get the, get, begin to get pieces in place to build to the global response that is required. I think the second thing we've learned again in Copenhagen is that this will not happen without leadership, without leadership from some governments, without leadership from business and civil society. And in Copenhagen, we saw very few in a position to or ready to step up and lead. As we go into Cancun, um, it is, as Secretary Alvira said, crucial that Cancun find a way to be a step forward, that Cancun find a way to restore confidence that we can crack this problem and that we can mobilize a global response. For us, that means a few things. One is that Cancun find a way to agree on a clear roadmap from here on what it is these negotiations are going to try to achieve and on how and on what timeline they're going to do that. And secondly, crucially important that Cancun, at Cancun, the parties find a way to begin to put building blocks in place, that they actually agree on some of the big issues where they are poised to come together. Uh, issues like red finance, technology, adaptation, so that we can begin to see a comprehensive agreement taking shape. Now there's no way that that will happen in Cancun without government leadership. Our experience throughout 20 years of climate negotiations is that that is the key. It was a few governments that really pushed hard to get a climate convention in place initially. It was a few governments including remarkably the United States which was crucial to getting strong targets putting, put into a Kyoto Protocol. And when the U.S. then later announced it could not ratify a Kyoto Protocol, it was a few governments who pushed hard to make sure that it nonetheless went into force. Mexico is doing a fantastic job of preparing the Cancun COP and working very hard to reach out in all directions in preparation of that meeting. It needs some partners. It needs some other major governments, United States, China, the European Union, others, ready to step up and push hard to get something done uh, in this meeting. And at the same time, of course, it's crucial that governments be acting at home in a bolder way because it is that which will help build the confidence needed to come together in an international deal. Mexico's commitment to reduce its own emissions by 30 percent by 2020 is important in that context. Uh, commitments now emerging in China and other countries also crucially important. But we will not get climate action if business and civil society sit on the sidelines waiting for the politicians to lead. I know that for many businessmen it is not comfortable to think about leading in a political debate or on a public issue like this, but the fact is you have many leadership roles to play. It takes vision and courage on your parts to step up to take on an issue like this. It requires that you think about the long-term interests of your company, of your investors, of your customers. It requires that you think broadly about the roles that you can play, not only in your, just in your own operations, but across 
your value chain, not only in reducing emissions, but actually in producing solutions. But we have worked with many companies over the last decade and have found time and again that it is possible to do much more than one might expect. One of the first companies to work with us in Climate Savers more than 12 years ago was IBM. And IBM quickly learned that it was able to make big reductions in its emissions by finding efficiencies it did not know were there and saving money in the process. A second early partner was Lafarge, the world's largest cement company. And what we found working with Lafarge is that when one company willing to lead sets ambitious targets for reducing its own emissions, it can in fact inspire action across its sector. We've worked with others, including Nokia, Unilever, and many more, who are looking not only at their own operations, but across their value chain, at the emissions of their suppliers, at the emissions that result when their product is used. And that clearly is an important frontier today. And you'll hear more over the course of today's discussions about companies that are working on solutions, not just reducing emissions, but finding new technologies, new products that help all of us uh, meet the challenge of climate change. But the important thing here is to recognize that corporate action like this can play a significant role in reducing tons, in taking tons out of the atmosphere. But it also is politically crucial because it demonstrates that business is ready to move and that progress on this issue is in fact possible. And it is also a platform upon which business can credibly say, we're doing, we're stepping up, to do our part, and we can do more if you act in the political sector. So it is also crucial, and I hope that is a key outcome of this meeting, it is also crucial that business both act and speak out. That business say with an unequivocal voice that this is an urgent issue, that they need clear direction from governments to set the incentives right, to set the markets, which will in fact build a green economy that they need and expect government to act boldly in Cancun and to move towards the kind of targets, commitments to emission reductions that will make, put all of us in a position to step up. So I hope what comes out of these next two days um, is, is two things in particular. One is real commitments to act, a shared excitement about what is possible that you can take back to your company, on which basis you can commit your company to being a leader in the fight against climate change and finding ways to lead with your customers and in your sector. And secondly, a recognition that we are all political actors here and that this issue will only be resolved if there is strong action by governments, and that will only happen if they hear unequivocally from business that that's needed and expected and urgent. Look forward to a very productive couple of days. Thank you.